amen, amen. Good to have you guys on our Sunday morning Bible class on this morning. I'm Brother Kevin Bethea, this is Brother Rodney DeShield, and we have our audience on today. I can mention their names, Sister Gaines, uh, Sister Naomi Watson, Sister Crystal Stevens, so far. So, amen. It's so good to have them in the house as well. We're so thankful to God for His goodness, His mercy, and His grace. We're thankful for Brother DeShields and Brother Terrell and Brother Crump holding down a fort for us on uh, last week, and, 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 and I'm sure soon they'll, 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 they'll be uh, 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 rotating. Uh, to teach and preach God's holy word. We're in Romans chapter number 11. Romans chapter number 11. We're going to just say a few words about 10 and go into 11. Right now, let's go to our Heavenly Father in the word of prayer. Most wise and everlasting God, our Father, we're so thankful for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. For you told us that we ought to always give thanks. And we do thank you for all things. We know, Heavenly Father, that in this life, there's going to be uh, ups and downs. There's going to be in and out. Because this life is a, a life that is designed uh, based upon uh, the sin that has entered the world. And we're asking you, Lord, to be with us and bless us as we navigate these waters to be able to be our best spiritual self, walking in your word, living in your word, all the way until the end. Pray for those who are listening right now that no matter what situation they may be going through in their homes, in their families, in their careers, in their communities, that they may know that the answer is in Jesus Christ. So let us study your word, Romans chapter 11. Let us dig into your word and let us see and understand uh, the happening of now and the happening of yesterday. For we realize that there's nothing new under the sun. Be with us, bless us, and strengthen us as we go to your word at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So again, it's so good to have everyone here on with us on today. Um, we got our uh, brother DeShields left off in chapter number 10, moving into chapter number 11. And we just wanted to, as we look at Romans chapter 10 and 11, one theme you can see in both of these books is Paul is trying to explain to this Roman church, which he's writing to, which is a mixed church, about why God has set this plan out that he has set out. And as you can see, um, he's going to start it out by saying and showing us that from the beginning, this was God's plan. God's plan was to bring, uh, uh, break down the walls that would separate the Jew and the Gentiles and would bring them back together. He also used that by uh, saving Israel, uh, making them a nation, Jacob, Jacob's children. And then what he did was he knew that they would be disobedient, and they were disobedient for some 700 years. And then as they go into the New Testament, he knew ultimately throughout their Old Testament experience, they would reject God on many fronts. And they would continue to reject him, reject him, reject him, reject him until God sent Jesus Christ. So that's what Paul is actually explaining to these individuals um, in chapter number 10 and 11. Of course, in chapter number 10, Paul gave a prayer out, Israel rejects Christ. And Paul said here that his heart's desire and prayer for Israel that they might be saved. So Paul knows that Israel is on the outskirts with God. Then when you get to here to verse 19 of chapter 10, Israel rejected God's prophets. And that's what Paul was letting them know here, verses 16 through 21. Brother DeShield, would you read 16 through 21 just for a review as we go into chapter 11? So we we'll read Romans 10, 10, 16, 10 16 through 21. Through 21. Yes, sir. And the Bible reads, But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Mm -hmm. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Wow. So everyone can see what Paul is talking about. Paul is saying that Israel, God, God tried to work with you time and time and time and time again. 
and all day long, you rejected God's prophets. You rejected God's word. It reminds me of, a, of the time we're living in today. How grace, graceful and merciful has God been to us today? But all day long, it seems as though we still will not hear to understand that the Bible is right, that the church is right, that Jesus is Lord, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We still resist that and fight against that. So, Brother Shields, I know you had talked about this last, last week as well, speaking from Israel, just rejecting the prophets. What's your thought? Well, um, I think two things, and one, one of the verses that I really want to point out is in verse 19, uh, it, it says, but I, but I say, did not Israel know? No. First saith, saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. So this was a, it was a, it was God's plan to, to give salvation to the Gentiles, to provoke Israel mm -hmm. to jealousy, mm -hmm. that they might mm -hmm. be reconciled, that they might receive the salvation as a nation mm -hmm. we're talking he's talking to a remnant now. now now right now he's talking to a remnant there's a remnant that was saved but there's also that but the nation the whole nation uh, he rejected the whole nation of israel and just accepted a remnant but he's saying that one of the purposes of this rejection is for them to be jealous is for them to have a jealousy that they might obey the gospel and accept God's terms of salvation. They were still trying to hold on to the law. So so it was a um it was Israel's Israel's ignorance, like we said last week. Mm -hmm. It was I Israel's ignorance and their 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 legacy of establishing their own righteousness. They wanted ri God's righteousness but only on their terms that they were exclusively God's people, mm -hmm. and so this whole so most so, so right now Paul is, is is saying, well God did this. Now He's letting him know God wants you. He's hoping that you will be upset mm -hmm. and jealous, and that you will you will you will back you will repent and come back to the salvation of, 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 of that's righteousness of righteousness through Christ Jesus. Excellent, excellent. Amen. In class, you know when you look at verses 19 through 21 of Acts chapter, excuse me, of Romans chapter 10, another thing I want us to see is, is that what does, and I'll start off with a question, so what does, if God want everybody to be saved, and if man refuses to walk in God's way, what is causing that if God wants everyone to be saved? Because we know that God would, then none would perish. But if man refuses to hear God's will, what's causing that? What's making that happen? Because as Brother DeShiel says here, we know with Israel, it is national pride. They, they want to be the only one. Now, this God is our God. He's nobody else's God. He's our friend. He's nobody else's friend. And therefore, they're having a hard time adjusting to that God is the God of everybody. They want God to be only their God. So we understand what's going on with them. It's this national pride type thing they got going on, even though their history say they rejected God over and over and over again. So what about today? What's stopping mankind today from obeying God since God would that none would perish? Yes, ma'am. away mm -hmm. there is no shame anymore for right nothing at all mm -hmm. we're just open with everything and we just don't care so that choice that god has given us we have run wild with it i like Amen. that i like that so basically it's free will it's choice and because god allows mankind to have a choice man abuses that choice Okay? It's not that God don't want them to have a choice. Man abuses that choice. The same way in our text here that Israel abused their choice. Because they were once God's chosen people. But they wouldn't listen to God. They wouldn't listen to the prophet. They wouldn't listen to anyone which caused God to use their, their disobedience to bring in a new people, which is the Gentiles, and make them jealous that God now... He don't need you. God got a world. So basically, I'm going to make the Gentiles make you jealous 
Because now you will see that it's not all about you. Anyone else? Well, I want to add mm -hmm. national pride, um, just like they had national pride. Mm -hmm. And I think I said it last week, but I just want to focus. The, these are just mirrors of the same things that we're falling into mm -hmm. in the church today. We have national, uh, our government, the, na the United States of America has a national pride. And so they're, um, they're going about, and now we, we see, like Sister Naomi just said, all the laws that are changing, uh, all, all you know, all these the the, the, the same-sex marriages. You can say what you want. Um, these these things are uh, freedom of speech, freedom of uh, you can carry, everybody can carry around weapons. Um, these um, these national laws, and and you will even hear politically. You will always hear God bless America. Uh, that's national pride. Not uh, basically in that. Now I know I'm not comparing the United States of America to God, to Israel in the Old Testament because we know that they had a, a relationship with God. But I am saying that we can slip into that today because uh, our nation or our government has fallen into a, a situation where they're um they they're establishing their own righteousness. righteousness. Mm -hmm. And God is going to shut that. God's going to shut any nation down, mm -hmm. and is shutting nations down. Mm -hmm. That will, will and, and the gospel, and they will never. That it will hinder them mm -hmm. from obeying the gospel, because greed hinders you. Uh, the greed, the of, uh, the just total no, no, no love, no love for your fellow man hinders you mm -hmm. from obeying the gospel. So we can see that um, we not to belabor the point because we did la we talked about this last week, mm -hmm. but we can see that um, this is written. Paul is talking to the the Jews, but he's also talking to us today. And we want to we want to make sure that we don't fall into these pitfalls of thinking that we're we're so special and that we get into a situation as Christians that we feel like once saved, always saved. Mm -hmm. That we can't everybody that everybody that was a Jew wasn't God's chosen people. Is it what, what Romans 10 is saying? Even though you were Israel, you, you, were, you, did, you, were, re, you were rejected, only a remnant. And that's the same thing. It's, it's really saying everybody that's calling themselves Christians today might not make it to heaven just because you're going around calling yourself a Christian. Mm -hmm. And that's the relevance I find. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, say, I'll say this too. When you look there at uh, chapter 11, as we move into chapter 11, you're going to find out that God is so loving, even though you can read verses, not chapters 9 and 10 in Romans, and see just how Israel just rejected God. Chapter 11, now Paul's going to say, but God still loves you. Yeah. But God still wow. loves you. Because that's the type of God we have. No matter what happens anywhere, God is a loving God. And man's behavior does not change God's love. God, what, what, the reason for hell is not that God don't love us, it's sin. That's wow. it. That's wow. it. It is, wow. it is, it is, it is, it is uh, uh, going off the mark of God. That's it. So let's look at Romans chapter number 11, verses 1 to, uh, let's read it 1 through 4. 1 through 4. 1 through 4. Uh, Brother DeShields, you want to read that? Okay, Romans 11, 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. The Bible reads, I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What? What? Ye not? That the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed, my, killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I, I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men, who have not bowed the knee, bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Excellent, excellent. One, what I want you guys to see here at home and, at, and here in the building is God still loves us. And from a standpoint, God still loves us, 
God reserves the right to respond to man's self-will, meaning your, your decisions, your decisions. When you look at any decision, because God, is, he, he's responding to Israel's decision. Israel's decision was to try to force God to accept the status quo, which is the high priest, the right. synagogue, the temple, the burnt offering, the way, like, we ain't changing. We want that, where God truly is going to reject that, but he's not going to reject the people of God. So when you look at this, the question then flows is, when it comes to will and our own free will that we have, what is the, is there any limit to it? I mean, do we, do we have the totality of free will? Is there any limit to the free will? Is free will bad? Is free will what God wants us to do? What do you think? I'll start off by saying this while you're gathering your thoughts. When you look at free will, God's free will was never intended to go outside his will. Free will was never intended to go outside of God's will. However, free will, I ain't going to say God, well, yes, but God allows you to do what you want to do. I mean, he never intended for it to go outside his will, but he's not going to stop you if you go outside his will, but you're going to pay a price for it. So to get it. Um, I think that free will, I think God gave us free will so mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. when we make our choices, the choices are sincere, especially the choice to follow him. You know, rather than us being robots and he make us do things, uh -huh. it means that if we choose him, uh -huh. it is re it's sincere. Genuine. And uh, he wants us to love him, not be robotic towards him. Amen. Like that, to love like Amen. Him. Good, good point. Good point. The Watson? That's right. Peace. A child of God, mm -hmm. then we have to be abiding by His will. In His will. His mm -hmm. will. His choice. Mm -hmm. Not not what we feel or what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. I like I like that. So basically, you're saying is it is free will, Sister Don. It is free will. However, it's got to be in God's aligned with God's will if we choose to follow God. There is no free will outside of God's will. Amen. If we choose to follow God, and I think that's what. Brother DeShield was just saying about how man is trying to force these laws, force these ordinances, force this stuff that is outside of God's will and make it appear as if it is right. Um, when I think about the Christian life, it is, it, it's a very evaluative process. It's a process that is self-sacrificial, mm -hmm. and most people are not going to do that, mm. sacrifice self, oh, because wow. it's all about me and me alone, mm -hmm. what I want, what I need. Mm -hmm. What I'm not going to do, mm -hmm. uh, you can't tell me this, mm -hmm. and I'm not doing that, mm -hmm. and who's doing that. Mm -hmm. And the world is just full of free will. The world is full of free will, mm -hmm. and like Rodney was saying, about my right to do this and my right to do that, and you can't tell me how to do this, and you can't tell me how to do that. Mm -hmm. It's like a no holes bar, and anything goes nowadays. Mm -hmm. And so what about our children coming up the rear if we don't teach them God's way? Where will they be when we leave here? That's because right. we're going to leave the church to them. Mm -hmm. And so it's us to, up to us to live a godly life mm -hmm. before them. Yeah. It's not just in our words. They have to see our self-sacrifice. We have to see us putting God first. Mm -hmm. When I get up in the morning, based on what I did on Saturday night, mm -hmm. if I don't feel like going to church, uh, then I have the free will not to go to church. That's right. Mm -hmm. But is God going to be pleased with me about putting that's right. him first? Mm -hmm. Or sleep first, or whatever I did it last night first. Because you made the choice to do whatever you did last night. Just like we make the choice to get up and go to work every day. That's good. And be ready for work. Or we made the choice to go on this vacation. Or made the choice to do That's anything. That's good. Right. We have to think about God in those terms. It's all about worshiping him, sacrificing for him with our monetary gifts, with our time and everything. And I'm not saying that I have it perfect. None of us and we still struggle. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I always do, I do it as a teacher, but I also do it as a Christian. Mm -hmm. I evaluate 
how I talk to people, how I interact with people, um, how I interact with my family. And I find that I've erred, I apologize. You know, I had a situation on my job where I felt that I was justified and I was correct. Mm -hmm. And somebody revealed an error to me, and I was horrified because I'm a Christian. Right. And this is not something that I wear Christian on my forehead. It's, mm -hmm. it's in the way that I act. Right. So I had to humble myself and apologize to that person mm -hmm. and let them know that I just didn't realize I had done that. Mm -hmm. So it's all sacrificial. Mm -hmm. And Amen. sacrifice hurts mm -hmm. for some time. Mm -hmm. You have to sometimes... Brother Veal was talking about marriages. That's mm -hmm. sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's not about the other person. It's about you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself. Mm -hmm. And people just do not, not want to do that. that. And mm -hmm. I like that. Uh, and in, ver in verse 1 here, and I'm going to turn over to Brother DeShield. In verse 1, Paul is making the same argument that you just made, Sister Don, when Paul says, I'm, also, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Jew. <laughs> you know, as he's telling them, have God rejected you? No, God hasn't rejected you. I'm a Jew. I'm a tribe of Benjamin. Right. He's letting them know that I have to change. I, right. I, I have to obey. I have right. to get in line. Right. I have to reset. And, and I want to add, uh, I, I believe Sister Geddes uh, just said, uh, I believe she's, she was the one that made the statement, but uh, free will is, is based on love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have a lack of. Um, that's what Israel had a lack of also. Um, free will, whenever you, Israel had fallen into a, uh, into a situation where they were saying they were God's children and nobody else was even, should even be considered mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as God's children. Mm -hmm. So that's, that right there, love, uh, all sin is selfishness. Uh, selfishness is in every sin. Every sin, sin basically is the result of selfishness, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And what we, what, what we can see with Israel is that Israel um, w didn't want anybody else from the, the beginning. Right. They didn't want the Gentile nations, and, and they, were, they, they, were, they were caught up. They were caught up in the faith. But all, all, all the time that God was bringing them through their journey, God was still delivering them. Mm -hmm. They were sitting even while they were going through. They were considering, they, were con they almost had gotten to the point where they were, they were considering themselves sinless. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can get to the point we think that we're righteous, mm -hmm. that we have self-righteousness, mm -hmm. that we walk around self And we think that the, uh, I, say, I said this again, not to be later the point, some of us walk around thinking that the murderer shouldn't be saved, mm -hmm. that the uh, 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 adulterer mm -hmm. shouldn't be saved. God is willing to, God has his arms open. That's what he's saying to Israel. Mm -hmm. Salvation is open to you, but it's also open to all. He wants all men everywhere mm -hmm. to repent. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to add that, that free will is based on, on, on your love. No, ch no parent wants a child to do something, um, to do something basically just because, um, just because you're making them do it. Mm -hmm. You want your child to do it because they love and respect your, your, what you're telling them to do. They're, they're, and the same, that's the same thing with God. God will reject us if we're, if we're serving him based on our own righteousness and desires. Mm -hmm. We're, we're nothing to God. Mm -hmm. No man, who, is, who has a sin? You name the greatest. Mm -hmm. The only one I can tell you is Jesus Christ. He, he is the, he's the goat. He's the greatest of all time. But everybody else, I don't care what you achieved, Einstein, I don't care who you are. To God, you're a sinner. Mm -hmm. And so, so he does give you free will because you have to accept the fact that you need him to have, to have that free will for him. And so Paul is, at, Paul is asking the question, or Paul is answering the question, which he, is that the Jews are posing to him mm -hmm. in verse 11, uh, chapter 11. Verse 1, I say then, have God cast away his people? The Israel was thinking, that, uh, is God casting us away? What he's given, he's, what he's, he, he's giving salvation to the Gentiles, but he's taking, to, he's rejecting us? And he said, God forbid. And he uses himself as his own as example, which he's done in chapters 9, 10, and 11. He goes back to, I love the fact that um, the the, the, the Spirit of God uses Paul 
as the example because he's the ultimate example of rejection mm -hmm. of salvation in persecuting a church, a tribe of Benjamin, educated. He was he, he was the most educated. He did Paul didn't lack money. Um, his his family, his lineage. He said he says for I I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Uh -huh. And then he answers, God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. And that's why I want to stop. What does that mean? Uh -huh. What does that mean? If, if you foreknow something, what did God foreknow? Was it one thing? Was it just a few things, sister? Or not? Do you have your hand up? Okay. God knew that what he created was not perfect. Wow. And he gave um, free will. So if you want to take sin back to the garden, it's based on Eve's choice. Her free will. Okay. Her decision to go against what God said. Wow. Um, and you can carry that forward to today. Our free will allows us to go against what God wow. said. Now, the thing is, we don't ever want to accept the consequences of our choices. So there's our self-righteousness, because if I can declare, declare myself righteous and right, then the consequences in my mind, I shouldn't have to deal with those consequences. And in all that God has put forth in his word, there are consequences to our choices. So our salvation is based on a choice, and if we choose not to accept God's gift of salvation, there are consequences to that. So you, we exercise free will all the time when we make choices, and even down to small things when it comes to knowing what God expects of That's us. That's good. And then us doing what we want to do anyway. Um, when you said, um, when you were talking about um, us deciding who should be saved and who shouldn't, that story is in the story of Jonah. Good. God told him, go. That's good. And, and, and speak to them. And he decided they weren't worthy. Mm -hmm. Well, who, who suffered the consequences of that? Jonah suffered the consequences yeah. of that. Not, not the people, because yeah. they still were saved. But Jonah suffered the consequences because he used his free will to say, no, I'm not doing that because they don't deserve it. So we always, we exercise free will. We don't accept the consequences of the choices that we make, but it, it doesn't matter because God's will is going to be done anyway. Amen. No, I like that. I like, and, and you know what I, I like, Sister Craig? I like the fact when you talk about that free will and consequences, that free will is co and, and consequences are started, as you say, back in Adam, back in the beginning. It has always been. When you look here, at verse 2, the brother DeShield started off with that says, God has not cast away his people who he foreknew. It says here that, uh, will ye not, or know ye not what the scripture said to Elias, okay. how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. When you look here at this intercession that's being made, to God against Israel, do you understand and do you see that God is constantly, I'll say it like this, what does it mean that God is constantly for us? Until we die, God is constantly for us. What does that mean? How does that look? We are constantly being given the, the mm. opportunity to turn it around wow. and do what God asks wow. us to do. Mm -hmm. I like that, Sister Watson. I like that. That's right. Chance to turn it around. He's there no matter what. He's there no matter what. No matter what. He's not leaving us. Mm -hmm. We are the ones that choose to leave, mm -hmm. but God will not leave us. Mm -hmm. Amen. I like that. I like that. And, and the reason why I like that is because if you are looking here at verse 2 and 3, you can know that that, that the Lord, they have killed thy prophets, dig down thine altars, and I'm alone, and they seek my life. But what said the answer unto the answer of God? 
unto him. I have reserved to myself 7,000 7, men, men who have not bowed the knee or the image of Baal, meaning there's somebody always on God's side. There's never, never yeah. going to be a point where yeah. somebody's not on God's side. When you look at that also, um, this whole idea of this making intercession for us, um, okay, God's making intercession for us. Why not just force us? Why not? I mean, at the, at the God, at God would that none would perish. Why not just, you know, stop us when we go astray? Stop us when we go too far. Huh. We can't make anyone love us. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I like, that. I like that. Anyone else? I like that. Yes. Also goes back, goes against free will. I mean, if you you if you have a free will, mm -hmm. you're going to do that on your own, and you're mm -hmm. not going to be like Mr. Getty said, a robot to do so as well. Mm -hmm. I, I see repentance mm -hmm. all over that. Mm -hmm. um, I I see just the, the repentance piece all over it. God is waiting for us to repent. Mm -hmm. uh, holding on, having your own free will means to repentance was the only thing will make you come back to God's will mm -hmm. is to is to say that you're wrong mm -hmm. and God is right. Mm -hmm. You have to we have to get to the point where I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Every Christian on a day to day, moment to moment, statement to statement mm -hmm. basis. And I think to you we need to take it that literal. Um sometimes we take repentance like, oh, it's just something I do around around my church around my Christian family, mm -hmm. you know, but when it comes to getting in the car and once we, every, every conversation is constant repentance to stay, to stay in this will. Mm -hmm. um, free, we have, but because our free will has to submit, mm -hmm. we, we have to tap out. Mm -hmm. We have to tap out in everything, in our discussions with one another, we have to tap out. Mm -hmm. It's every, every, I like what Paul said in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, when he says that he takes, we take every um, conversation, every thought and imagination captive and make it obedient uh -huh. to the Word of God. That's, that's, that's deep. Uh -huh. That's saying that everything that we, uh, that's free will. That's, that's, that's tapping out. You can say, say I, I'm tapping out. Uh -huh. God, you're right no matter what, even if I'm talking about, a, a TV program that has another message. I'm gonna take that message and make it God. Yes. yes. That is, is this about God? Everything's about everything is His. He owns everything. It's nothing we own. I don't own the suit. Mm -hmm. I don't own the car that I have. I don't own it. Mm -hmm. It's on loan us. So our free will, our, our free will has to be based on the fact that we're willing to uh, uh, submission to our free will, or or f uh, God will accept us only if I, if we submit to his will mm -hmm. and get, do away with our free will mm -hmm. with our with our concept i have the choice because the only ch god really is the only saying this only one if you want to be with him it's only one choice you have to make what did I, uh joshua say uh as for me and my house mm -hmm. he said choose ye this day israel mm -hmm. he said i tell you what no matter what y'all do as for me and my house Serve. We're going to serve the Lord. And you're exactly right. And, you, and when you're looking at God's two greatest commandments as well, that's going to play a part as well. Uh, John and Brother Blackwell. What I was going to say is that what you do of your own free will builds discipline and respect in your mind for that which you do. And that <coughs> transcends into your Christian life. When you take your free will and you study God's word, you learn to respect that word, and you put those principles and those things that God asked us to do into your life. Wow. So anybody, I mean, even when you're raising your children, you can tell them what to do, and we have the power to tell them what to do. But if we give them everything, have they really done anything? It's all wow. comes to them too easily. Right. That'd be that what well. you do wow. on your own, you build a respect for. And that goes for God's word as well. If it gi is given to you too freely, then you're not wow. going to expect it. You're going to take advantage of it. Wow. And hence, the world today. The world. I like that. I like that. I like that. Brother Black, brother Mike is coming now. And uh, Sister Dawn, well said. There has to be, it has to be from you. It has to be that, 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 that love that comes from you. It has to be that desire 
Whatever you're going to do has to come from you, Brother Blackwell. Well, if, if we all remember how we felt when we made that first step and got baptized, that's what God wants. Because at that moment, we realized we couldn't do nothing without God, and that's what we needed to make us whole. Mm -hmm. If we keep that feeling, mm -hmm. if we keep that concept, that notion, that inside of us, mm -hmm. that's the point what God wants us to keep throughout our Christian life. Because mm -hmm. that's the only time that we truly mm -hmm. surrendered to Christ mm -hmm. and and figured out that as a person, we can't do it without him. Mm -hmm. We Amen. can't do it without him. If we have that feeling throughout our Christian life, that's what God wants. Mm -hmm. Amen. I like that. I like that. And you know, you're talking about here in this text right here, we're talking about this, this, this system change where um, when Paul is talking about the remnant now uh, and using that example about uh, 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 Elijah and Baal, he's really letting them know that it's no longer going to be a national thing. It's no, your religion is no longer going to be a national thing. It's going to be an individual thing. It's going to be, and that's what Paul is saying. I was a Jew. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. But I had to leave that system and have a relationship with God. And everybody has to believe, ha have to sure up their decision making. The first two commandments. What's the first two commandments? That's right. Love God. Yeah, love thy neighbor. Love. God ain't going to make you love him. Yeah. God can make it. Now, yeah. now, now, I'll say this. Explain to me what does it mean God, God, God wants my love but won't make me give him my love. God wants you to love your neighbor but won't make you love your neighbor. What is, what, what is that? Because, go ahead, Sister Kelly. Love is voluntary. Love. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, right. It can't be forced. Right. Can't be forced. You you have to want it, and you go you go after loving. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's effort. It's your personal, individual effort uh -huh. to love, exactly. be it God or other people, uh -huh. kindness. Uh -huh. It's your own, uh -huh. your effort because you submitting to uh -huh. the goodness of it, and that it it's from God. I you like love that. God. All right. so the great. I know we say sin will take you further than you want it to go, but the same can be said for love. Mm -hmm. Because when we really love, mm -hmm. we will take a lot, mm -hmm. we will do a wow. lot, we will walk a lot of miles, mm -hmm. we wow. will accept a lot of things mm -hmm. that if we don't really love them, mm -hmm. it, it ain't going to happen. So love will move you in ways that just free will will not. Right, right. And that's why God makes that the commandment, because he knows that's what it's going to take to follow and stay with me. You got to love me with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. You got to love me, because the enemy is going to come, and things are going to happen, and you're using Israel as an example. Israel would kill you if you said something against their God, but they didn't even obey their own God. That's right. So that goes to show that's you that, right. that you can... You can really say that I'm a protector of God, but the question on the floor is, well, does, e does that equate to your love for God? Because you can protect something, but not have the love you need to sustain that protection. Right, right. So when you look at that uh, and look at this situation, God gave that command. He's not going to make you love him, but he knows that through that love, somebody's going to love somebody. If they love him, they'll, they'll know how to leave him. They love them. They can't leave them. And that's why you see all the individuals in the Bible who, even the apostles when they left, they love Jesus. They, they, and Jesus knew they was coming back. Why? Because it's something about the power of love. Wow. Once that is incorporated. Wow. Just an animal. And that's because the love that uh, God wants from us is that unconditional love. It has nothing to, to do with how you feel about me. I was about to say that. It's how am I going to love you mm -hmm. unconditionally? Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and, and to add what, to what Sister Naomi said, that means it's not fa family love. Mm -hmm. It's not 
erotic love, all the loves, the, the sturgios, the filios, mm -hmm. it's not all of that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's agape. It's a, it's a standard of love that only God, that only th to, get, to get to God, you have to have that standard. And all Christians are held, Israel was held to that standard, mm -hmm. and we are held to that standard mm -hmm. today as Christians. I love it. I love it. Verse 5. Who want to read verse 5 for me? Verse 5 from the audience. Who want to read from the audience? Sure, Brother Brown. Romans 11, 5. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Oh, right there. Wow. Paul said, even at the time of this writing, there's a remnant. Now, is he separating a, because remnant means a small, small section. Mm -hmm. So what about the big section? What is he saying here? He's saying there's a remnant. At, even at this time, <laughs> there's a remnant. So are we saying that, that, Paul is um, saying that there's only going to be a small amount that's going to uh, be able to make this change. What do you think? Go ahead, again. I think that's what he's saying, and it, re Amen. And it reminds me of in the New Covenant mm -hmm. where he says, uh, wide is the gate that that's leads it. to life, and narrow is, no, Narrow is the way mm -hmm. that leads to life, but most people will go wow. the wide way yes. that leads to destruction. Wow. Yes, and few they be there find it. Yep. <laughs> Anyone else? And here's, and here's the important thing I want us to read in there, too. As Paul writes this to them, Paul is basically let them, letting them know that you guys are going to resist the change. You guys are basically are you're in this church. Even while you're sitting in the church of Rome, you're sitting here with, your, with the Gentiles in the same room with you, and you're having a problem. You're having a big problem with we the only ones, even though these are your brothers and sisters in Christ. And Paul is letting them know, and everybody ain't coming over here. Everybody from our nation ain't coming over here. It's going to be a remnant that's going to come and that's going to accept the teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that goes to show us in our world today, everybody to from where we come from ain't coming. It's like all... Paul's Jewish family ain't coming. All our family ain't coming. And therefore, there has to be a mindset of, um, I'll say it like this. Then uh, if we know, if it's true that we ain't getting everybody, then how do we stay faithful? Because we love some next to us, but we, they may not come. How do we stay faithful? We long for them. We love them. They're, they're, you know, they're, for some of us, our families, our world. But black one? Well, that just goes back to when he sent out the 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 few when he says, if they accept, welcome them and keep them. If they don't, shake the dust and keep it moving, and that God will deal with them after that. Mm -hmm. But we have to know that we. The first thing is, we have to accept God's word for what it is. Mm -hmm. If we don't do that, then we'll get hung up in our own feelings on what we want. That's good. That's good. <laughs> if, if, if we just accept it and say, if he told you, shake the dust and move, I'll deal with him. Why you, why you got to deal with him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. What is your purpose? I like that. I like that. Should I accept the, um, Craig? Mm -hmm. So if you love God above all else, um, love him more than your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, mm -hmm. then... The choice is already made. Mm -hmm. You've decided to love God mm -hmm. above all else, and mm -hmm. you've loved God. Your family is not that you don't love them, mm -hmm. but they don't set your priority. Right, love less, right? right. I like that. I like that. Yeah, yes, yes, ma'am. I think um, an example is kind of Gerald and I talk about we have all grown children, mm -hmm. and we want all of our grown children to be with us and follow us and, and follow in the right way and uh, with the kids we we can only tell them what's right we can show them what's right mm -hmm. um, but at some point we have to realize that you know we've set the path and they need to follow and some Amen. of them may not mm -hmm. but um, I think that's kind of a good example because we love the kids and we want them all to be safe mm -hmm. and we want them all to follow in the right path mm -hmm. but we can only show them 
and hope that they, they do that. So we have to Amen. do that with a lot of family. Amen. And, you know, and I like that, and I see your hand too, Sister. I like that because it's modeling. Sometimes we get to a point where all you got left is modeling. Wow. All you, got, all you can do is live it. <coughs> all yeah. you can do is be consistent in your living of it. And I think Paul, sitting here talking to these Israelites, saying, I'm, a, I'm, I'm of the tribe of, 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 of Benjamin. You know, I, I, I'm of Abraham. I think Paul is limited in front of them. Paul says, listen, I know what y'all going through. I, I'm there. I'm a Jew. So I agree. Paul is modeling this in this letter right here. Um, speaking of our kids, it made me um, think about my son. When my kids were young, and I would bring both of them <clears throat> to service with me, and I remember my son, this is when we have an influence. It's also what they see in us. And I remember my son saying to me that how come he has to come to service because he mentioned the males in my family. He was saying like daddy, his Uncle uncles, Joe. he could, yes, mm -hmm. and he, he has said, you know, how come he has to come? Because he was with the females, mm -hmm. but the males weren't coming. So that also have an influence, especially when our kids are young. And I remember telling him, I said, our relationship with God is one on one is our relationship with God. It is not based on anyone else. I say we will have to stand in front of God and give an account for ourselves. And I I continue to keep my son in prayer. I Amen. love that. I love Amen. Amen. And, and and I just want to add, I see in verse five, going back to eleven and five, and what you brought out was so excellent because he was talking to the Christians, these Jews had were, were had obeyed the gospel, but they still had a problem. And it goes back to, again, me, my, the personal application I see in this is that we have to really be worried of the fact they were in the church. Uh -huh. But he said some of y'all are still going to, y'all have problems. You're, 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 and it goes back to what he wrote in uh, what, what, um, he, he said to Timothy, Paul said to Timothy in, in 1 Corinthians, and 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter, he said, some shall depart, the Spirit speaks especially, some shall depart from the faith. The, the, uh, Brother Veal said this one, I think I heard a little bit of his sermon, and he was talking about those hard sayings. Mm -hmm. We don't like to hear that. Mm -hmm. That, our, and our modeling is, our modeling can't be fake, you know, we can't, we can't be like actors, mm -hmm. like I'm just like this in front of y'all, you know, when we come together, you know, Rod, Rod, he, he's always loving, and you know, we can't be, out. it can't be an act, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it has, it has to be, and, and, and I, and you don't know whether I'm acting, but God knows whether I'm acting, that's how deep it is, that, 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 that he's, he's, his salvation is for those who truly Submit and, and 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 give their life up. I love him. That's right. I mean, and giving your life up means that goes back to free will. That means that it's not about you. Mm -hmm. Nothing you do is about you. And I know, understand that's a level that we day by day. But then that's where repentance and examination comes in. Mm -hmm. That's where studying, that's where studying God's word. A lot of times the reasons will fall away is because we become Christians, like Brother Blackwell said. We, we need to keep that zeal going mm -hmm. because we, ne we don't, uh, God said uh, uh, that man does not live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but by every word, I see you, brother, but by every word that comes from, the, from, from God. So are we eating God's word enough to be obedient. Sometimes we're not being obedient because we're not saturating ourselves in our families, in our cars, in our private moments. We're not saturating ourselves. So that is saying that God's grace, he does want everybody to be saved, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's going to be because you want God. It ain't going to be because, you know, it ain't going to be under your conditions. And sister, I see you there. Um, throughout the New Testament, we are warned of those that have claimed the name of Christ but have not really transition yeah submitted mm -hmm. they have not submitted and they are in the church mm -hmm. they have been baptized they come mm -hmm. that does, and that that is warning us that there is there can be subversion in the church that's good word good word mm -hmm. and when paul talks about 
Jews being baptized, and you talked about he was talking to Christian Jews mm-hmm. that had not really accepted the whole right conversion. Mm-hmm. Then the warning was about them mm-hmm. because what they were doing was no, you still have to do this. Mm-hmm. No, That's you it. still have to do that. So they were still trying, even though they had been baptized and said they accepted Christ, they were still trying to bring in those parts of the law that uh-huh. they were not willing to let go of. Uh-huh. And you have to be wary of that. Mm-hmm. You have to be aware uh-huh. of that going Amen. on. Amen. And it, when we come converted, if we're not fully converted, we're still going to drag some of those old things in with us. Uh-huh. I like that. I like that. I like that. Good, Alex. And once we are converted, you ask how, with it only being a fragment, how do we stay a part of that fragment? And I think of the scripture study to show thyself approved. Mm -hmm. When we look at that, our immediate thought is study is reading the Bible Mm -hmm. and taking you know, meditating, remembering, and praying on it. But one who is a studier of something practices the study. So when we study, that is our worship, that is our attendance, that is our service. It's everything that we do that makes us a studier of God so that we may be approved. So if we continue in his word, his word pricks us and it will never wow. return void. Amen. Well, I like that. Amen. And you, know, you know, when you look at that, never well say about uh, we got to study it and we have to apply it. We got to practice it. When you look here, when Paul is talking to them as we close out for the day, um, a great class, great class, everyone, Amen. great class, great input. Uh, in verse 6 where it says, Paul is now is going to compare grace to the law because Sister Ornette is right. They want the law. They like the law. And at least they want, they say, listen, well, don't take all the law from me. <laughs> don't take the, sir, take, the, take the ceremonial stuff. But here it says here in verse 6, but if by grace then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. And what he's saying here is this, that it's either by the law or it's not by the law, okay? Because that's the important thing is love is that one tangible thing that keeps us living in a way that supersedes ritualism. It supersedes, supersedes um, ceremonialism. It is something that is genuine, comes from the heart. It's almost like it's almost like giving an offering. When you give offering, you give it. You don't. You shouldn't give it just because the guy next to you watching you or the sister next to you watching you. Right. You're giving it from the heart. Right. Like right. Lord, I love you. I love your cause. Right. And this is for your cause. Right. That's the genuine love God looking for. What the Jews here are struggling in this letter is is that they are struggling because. Uh, They want some of the law to come over, and it seems like Paul is telling them that the law and the system of the law is done away with. It's gone, and that that is what he's saying. So that's why now he has to get into this area of grace. So next week when we do come back, we're going to pick it up again at verse 6, talking about the law versus grace. And we're going to see how Paul applies these things to help them to understand that all isn't totally lost. However, there's a remnant that's that's going to be saved. And we'll deal with it from there. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, yep, thank you so much for being here at 1145. And we're going to uh, close out uh, in a word of prayer. But we want to let you know, please join us for our 11 a.m. morning worship service. Stay right there. We're going to transition over. Give us 15 minutes to get started at 11 a.m. And come back to see us again next Sunday morning at 945 as we continue to study Romans chapter 11, this fantastic uh, message of God's word that is able to help you in your spiritual walk with God. Amen. I'm Brother Kevin Bethea, Brother Rodney DeShields, and our class is here from the East Baltimore Adult Bible Class. And thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you on next Sunday. Let's go to our Heavenly Father. And our oh. Brother DeShields, we'll pray. Brother Washington. Brother Washington? We'll close out in prayer. we we'll close out, Brother Washington. Close Amen. out in prayer. Well, come in camera, Bruce. Come in camera, Bruce. There. <laughs> right there. That's good. They can see it. Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you on this day thanking you for, again, another portion of your word. We thank you for 
all the things that we've discussed. We thank you for having the free will and love of your word, dear Lord. Continue to be with us in the things that we've learned today, that we will apply them into our Christian walk and our knowledge, dear Lord, as we go out and continue to serve you and evangelize and keep souls saved. Dear Lord, we ask you to please go with us as we go into another portion of your worship, dear Lord, that we may do so in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you, dear Lord. This and more we pray in your darling son, Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. 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 God is for you. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Claire. Appreciate it.